look at this mess just to do two bags of this guy hello everybody my name is mika rocket jacobson the owner of raw by rocket and welcome to my very first how-to video today i will be sharing with you two simple recipes for a diy bath salt soak that you can do at home and i'll be sharing with you some substitutes slash alternatives that you can use just in case you don't have the ingredients that i will be showing you today recipe number one a simple salt soak Step number one, get prepared. Get your gloves on, and even if you're making this for yourself, it is great to keep the whole process as hygienic as possible. I would suggest also using a mask, especially working with some of the finer powders that are lighter than air, since this can irritate your nose and lungs. Make sure you have everything you need in hand, like your recipe, a scale, sifter, a spoon, and a spatula. After getting prepared, we're going to mix all our dried ingredients. First, I have the fine Dead Sea salt. You can use any salt you have available, such as non-iodized sea salt, Epsom salt, Himalayan salt. I personally love working with the Dead Sea salt because of all the minerals it has that I would love for my skin to absorb. I like to put my dry ingredients through a sifter just to make sure I get all the clumps out. And then I have my vegetable powder. Today I used beetroot powder, which gives it a darker pink, kind of purplish color. And it's good in cleaning dead skin cells from your skin and it makes it look soft. But if you don't have this at hand, you can either skip this step or use any other vegetable powder like turmeric, which is high in antioxidants and anti-inflammatory components and it provides a glow and a luster to the skin and cinnamon is great to help clear out acne green tea powder reduces skin irritation skin redness and swelling find whatever you have and do research on it before you add it here step number three is to combine our wet ingredients into the dry ingredients it is best to use a light carrier oil together with your essential oil. So here, I use my favorite grapeseed oil, which contains high levels of vitamin E, improving your skin's elasticity and softness. The carrier oil will also help the essential oil evenly mix in with the salt. The essential oil I used here is Crafter's Choice Calming and Relaxing Lavender Essential Oil, which helps with acne and it reduces redness and wrinkles. You can use whatever essential oil you have. In this day and age, the sky's the limit for your EO choices. Combine everything, make sure there are no clumps, and the oils are dispersed evenly. Step number four is to store it in an airtight container. I use these bags lined with a film when I sell my products. And this is how I get the bag ready. I have my stickers that I've designed and had printed through onlinelabels.com. I love them. And I have the ingredients, benefits, and instructions in the back. However, if you are using this for yourself, you can use anything that you have around the house, like an airtight recycled glass, a container, or even a Tupperware. Just make sure to pack it tightly, trying to leave little to no air pockets on the top. I seal it. And then I usually use a heat seal for the final touch. I also suggest labeling your jar so you remember what it is.
Recipe number two, a fizzy salt soak. Step one, get prepared like you did for recipe one. And if you notice, I use the same bowl. <laughs> That's because I'm making something for myself and I'll be using the same essential oil. Step two, we are doing part one of the dry ingredients, which is also the same as we did in the previous recipe. So still using the sifter, I start with the dead sea salt again, which is now less than the first version because of this recipe. Then I again add the beetroot powder, removing as much powdered clumps as I can to disperse the color evenly. Step three, the wet ingredients. Then I again have the same light carrier oil, so I'm using grapeseed oil, and lavender for my essential oil, and I mix. Step four, which is the new step, it is part two of dry ingredients. I have one part baking soda, which will help absorb more of the oil, creating a drier mixture. And this can also help soothe inflammation and be used as an exfoliant. And one part citric acid, which reacts with a baking soda, allowing it to fizz when it comes in contact with water. This is why I have this in step four, to assure that it wouldn't have reacted in any way when I poured in the grapeseed and lavender oil. Step five, we're gonna pack it up again in an airtight container. So it's the same thing, I'm gonna pack it up in my bags and you can do the same if you don't have any bags or you're not selling them, you know, just put it in a jar, a container or a Tupperware. Just make sure that you can seal it really tightly. Now, to see how they work in the warm water. Let's compare the regular salt soak with the fizzy salt soak. Since I'm doing this just in the sink, I'm using one half of a tablespoon, but for a bath, depending on how big it is, you can use one fourth to four cups. So as you can see, it is slowly dissolving and it feels very cleansing and conditioning, but not as creamy as when I use my buttery bath bombs. Mmm, and it smells so good. And I personally would love to combine this with a sweet scented bath bomb. I don't know why I'm wearing gloves, but... Mmm. And because of the dry to wet ingredient ratio and using a light carrier oil, it will leave your bathtub clean and not oily and not stained at all. Now for the fizzy version. I'm using the same amount. One half tablespoon for the sink and one fourth to two cups for a whole bath. Ooh, do you hear that? Here's a close up. A big difference for sure is the fizz. Texture-wise, it feels the same. Very conditioning, but not heavy. And the greens dissolved quicker, probably because of the smaller particles of the baking soda and citric acid compared to just plain salt. And it smells mm, just as relaxing as the first one. It cleans up just the same as the first recipe as well. I love using salt from the Dead Sea. And here at Raw by Rocket, I work with a supplier who sources it from Israel. And the salt has been cleaned through air and optics, which means that 
It was done with the least amount of chemicals to get it cleaned. And I've personally found it so important for me to use dead sea salt in my products because one, it relieves dry and sensitive and itchy skin from conditions such as acne, eczema, and psoriasis. And super awesome for the scalp and hair too. And for the body, the Dead Sea minerals in the salt absorb into the muscle tissues and provide relief from soreness and stiffness. Dead Sea Salt is so instrumental in improving skin hydration and reducing inflammation. Make sure to check out my soap bake shop online where you'll find other products that incorporate salt from the Dead Sea. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell below because I will be sharing with you another how-to video, specifically how to make bath salt truffles. So if you want to hear more about chemical-free skincare, my handmade body products, and living a life with God, I will see you back on my channel. That is all, folks. Goodbye for now.